On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, Sermon Notes in ProPresenter 6. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you with the software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to join the conversation, so just do that below the video. So, one of the things that we've been doing is we've been going through ProPresenter 6, and it occurred to me that it's a great thing if I were to just coalesce some of the lessons uh, that we've gone through so that if you just want a subject and you want everything related to that subject, you could go to that. So I've done one for advancing slides and this is just slightly different. This is sermon notes. So let's head over to my computer and we'll take a look. So when you're doing sermon notes, there are a few things to keep in mind. First off, you want to consider how your pastor does sermon notes. It could be that you get a list written on a note card. It could be you get a text document and additions. It could be you get a Microsoft Word document. You get a PDF. Maybe you even get a PowerPoint or Keynote. So that's the first thing to consider. Now if you get a file, the first thing I would do is go to File, Import, and here we have some choices. Oops, knock that down when I move my leg. Okay, here we have some choices. We could import file, import text from clipboard, import PowerPoint, and import video image, import library from previous version. This last one, we won't need to worry about. It's one of these first four that we're probably going to deal with, specifically these first three. So when it comes to import file, that would tend to be my preference, is I don't want the pastor going through the trouble of making a PowerPoint or a keynote file or putting it all in Word or any of that. Just a simple text document with a couple of carriage returns in between points is the best way to do that. So you click this, import, and then it... Um, it should allow you to navigate to where the text file is. You select it, you click uh, import. I'm not going to go through that, but that's, in my mind, that's the best way to do it. Anywhere that there's an image, just put in, you know, image one and the name of the file, and your pastor gives you all the files. Easy, breezy, lemon squeezy, you're done. That's my preference, personally. If it's a Word file, what I would do is I would copy the text and then I would go to import text from clipboard and that would do it. If it's a PowerPoint, you can import the PowerPoint, but you lose a lot of control there. And while some pastors are artistic and able to do that, really that's a load that isn't really meant to be carried by the pastor in general, I don't believe. This might be controversial, but I do believe that there's a reason that the Lord had artists create the tabernacle and just gave the instructions to Moses. So that's just my feeling on the matter. Could be wrong. So those are those three options. You could absolutely create it um, from scratch. So... This was uh, one I did back in March, as I'm recording this. Uh, it's no longer March. It's actually now November. So this was eight months ago. Not quite eight months, but about then. And we'll see that there are a lot of things here that you can do. Now you can type in each individual one. You can copy and paste if you want. The one trick that I didn't know initially was you can go into Bibles here, type in your uh, scripture, choose your version, etc. And then you have a save to 
uh, current document, which is the one that I'm going to choose, or if it was part of a presentation by itself, let's say the worship leader was going to uh, read scripture, you had a daily reading from the lectionary, whatever, doesn't matter, you'd choose save to selected text. So we're going to select save to current document, and that should bring that in here. And here it is. So that's a quick way to bring scripture in here. And here you can edit this just like you do a song with either a quick edit or uh, right click and bring up the edit slide dialog and get more arms and elbows into it. Whatever works for you. Um, you could even have, um, oh, that's the wrong one. There is a uh, up here, I don't use this, so I've forgotten format. Well, you can change the fonts pretty easily there. View, no, it's not, it's format bar. Yep. So you can even bring up the format bar and do your changes there. So that's some of the basics. Remember that you do have with beginning with ProPresenter 5, we had builds and underlying text. So remember a good way to tell if a slide has that is this little dot here. There will be at least one dot indicating that there is one thing that happens after you add the new slide. If you had multiples, then you would have uh, multiple dots. So here, let's edit this slide. And what we're going to do is, this was stuff from way back when, a couple of previous shows. And what we can do is Highlight it. Okay, there we go. And then we go into here and we've got the text reveal, which is bulleted list, none, which is the default. So if I didn't want it to text reveal, I could do that. If I wanted it to text reveal, bulleted list where there's a carriage return at each of these lines. And then the other option is for an underline. Let's say I wanted to do that, I would um, highlight that, and now I need to underline it. Let's see where this is. Silly me, of course it's... Under styles, silly me, underlined. Okay, so now with it underlined, I have the choice instead of bulleted list, I can do a fill in the blank. So here the problem is the color has changed. So I need to go in here. Where is it? Yes. Go in here and change the fill color. Oops, wrong one. Not the fill color that fills the box. Ah, this one. Change that one to snow. So. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to change that to snow. Maybe for some reason it didn't take, so I'm going to do it like that. And 
now it took. Okay, so now from here, I can scroll back down and again as before I can highlight that and select fill in the blank and now that will work as a fill in the blank and just to be clear we do that oh we got this blank and then I either click on the slide again or hit the space bar right arrow any of the ways that you would normally do it and then that shows up so those are just some of the basic strategies that you should employ when you're dealing with sermon notes. Remember, PowerPoint and Keynote files, you're going to have the problem that you're not able to edit those uh, on the fly in ProPresenter. You'd have to bring up Keynote or PowerPoint and you need uh, the right versions of both of those. So I have an older version of Keynote. It doesn't want to work here. Um, and I don't have PowerPoint at all, so I couldn't actually do it on this machine. So that's another issue to consider. So in general, just to recap, I would prefer, if, if I were doing this, to have a text file, just simple text with all my pastor's sermon notes, having a blank spot wherever there's an image and just the name of the image and have a separate folder with the images in it any videos again in a separate folder and just bring those in one at a time secondly i could build it i could copy from a word document or a pdf and then kind of the worst case scenario in my estimation is to do PowerPoint just because you lose all the control that you have in ProPresenter 6. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that now you know just some of the tricks that you can use to make building the pastor's sermon a little bit easier in ProPresenter 6. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts. G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up a church tech gift of your choice along with a free subscription to my email newsletter. And you probably like my store, so head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store, and there you can pick up a copy of, um, of any of my resources as well as Church Tech U. Church Tech U is a community of church techies where we discuss issues and it has links to all of my content there including my books, my video course, uh, and it's really well organized around the idea of you pick a subject and this is what you can learn through that. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity. Thank you.